This episode of Boat Tech TV covers painting a marine propeller. In the last episode, we looked at marine fouling and explained the different types and uh, the effects it can have on a boat in terms of loss in performance and increased drag. This week we're going to cover the paint that you can apply um, to try and limit um, the, the organism's growth. It's not always possible to do that. Um, if you remember this picture here, we're looking at the huge barnacles um, and this boat would just, it would just kill the speed. The forward speed of this would be reduced by 40 or 50 percent. It's a significant thing to happen. So the take home from today's show would be knowing what types of paint are out there. I mean, there's really just two, uh, anti-fouling and foul release. And then knowing within these types, um, just some of the key brands and some of the strengths and weaknesses of those types of paint. And that's really what we wanted to put across. So um, the main types of paint, as we said, there's, if broadly speaking, it can fall into two categories. Uh, there's an anti-fouling and then there's a foul release. Um, the anti-fouling is, is more commonly known as an ablative. If you think of it as a, a bar of soap, uh, you, the, the boat is like a bar of soap. And as the water goes through, uh, it, it slowly dissolves the layer of paint and it makes it smoother, which reduces the drag, which is good. But as it, as it wears away, it releases the biocide. So it stops its anti-fouling paint. The other one, which is the more modern one, um, doesn't have any biocides in at all. And it's trying to um, not pollute the environment. And this is a foul release. If you think of it like a, um, a Teflon frying pan, the barnacles will sit on the pan and then at a certain water speed, and it started off about 18 knots in its as the paints have become more and more advanced, they're getting 18 knots, 12 knots. I think it's down to, I'm not quite sure, but I would say, I would say less than 10 knots now. Um, the, the, the barnacles can't stick to it. It's too slippy and they just get washed off. So there's no pollutants going into the environment. So it's very, very good for everything. And you can see um, this chap, we showed this last week on a cruise ship. They come in with the big cruise ships. Uh, they just pressure wash them down and off they go. So it's very good. You're not stripping the paint all the time um, and you're not putting the biocides in the water. So it's a, it's a nice system. So again, anti-fouling, foul release. So of the um, anti-foulings, the ablative, everyone knows the bottom paint. Um, if you've taken your boat out when you've done a, a short haul or something and a guy's pressure washed it, if it's a blue hull, you have blue water all over where it's just washed some of the paint off. So the idea is a very, very soft paint. A couple of the brands that we have, um, Petit Hydrocoat and Micron 66. Again, they've all got a built-in biocide. They, they self-clean, so if you if you didn't um, haul your boat out every couple of years and retouch it, um, it would eventually wear off and you'd just be down to uh, gel coat. Um, so you've got to keep it, you've got to top it up, and you can actually just put paint on top of paint. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those nice touch-up ones. It's not like a silicone where you've got to take everything off and put it all back on again. Um, one thing I do see people doing is taking the bottom paint and painting everything with it. Um, so, including the propeller. Now, if you can, if you've seen the guys um, spraying the boats when they come out, it does come off very, very easily. So, if you do paint the propeller, because the propeller is moving much faster than the hull and it's got much more abrasion from the water, it's going to wear a lot faster. So, the coating will come off. So, there's a different type of ablative, um, which is a hard bottom paint, and this is really getting into power boats and high speed boats where the wear rate is much faster. Um, and then it's also great for the propeller. So um, I, I mean, straight off the bat, the ones I really like, um, we had great success with, has been the Petit brand of paint. Um, there's a, a can called uh, Barnacle Guard here, and it's just a high zinc paint. And it's, it, it is a, a, an ablative sort of type. It does wear off uh, as you do it. And it was originally built to me as something that lasts three months and then the barnacles come back. Um, and what we've seen, the way the yards put it on, they'll put three or four coats on. Um, and it'll get a nice thickness to it and people will haul out a year later and there's nothing on the propeller and it's got a really nice um, protective coating. Um, at the Annapolis boat so last year I had a chat with the guys in Petit and they were recommended that you did the, the barnacle guard and then on top of it you put their um, anti-fouling paint it's called Vivid it comes in lots of amazing colors um, as a top coat and to do that so it's like a two-part system um, and we're going to be trying that this summer and reporting on, it on, a, on another show to explain um, how it works, pros and cons, and, and did it do the job sort of thing. Because um, again, it's 
different environments, different times of year, different bugs. It's it's all different. Um, International Paints, uh, Interlux, um, they also have a hard bottom paint, Trilux 33, which can also be used on propellers. Um, again, they're, they're both very good. I've not tried in service well we will do in service videos but so we'll, we'll do some comparative tests but for now those are the main brands that I, I do see at the boat shows the other one which you've had a, a lot of um, favorable comments about has been prop speed and um, it, it's one of those paints it's a silicon type paint and it's very odd when you see it on the trade show stands you'll go up and the propeller looks like it's been dipped in cork or bathroom sealant or something and it just feel well it is it's just a silicon paint it's just very squidgy and it's uh, you can scratch it with the nails so it's it's, it's just an unusual type of paint now this is a, a high-end it's, it's quite an expensive uh, application and this is um, this would be a foul release type of paint so all the weed and all the, the barnacles would try and settle on it that secrete all their, their two-part glue that they that we talked about in another episode and as soon as the prop started to spin they would just get thrown off so again it's a it's a foul release as you get into the silicon paints, they do um, seem to be more simple in how they work. Um, but the application and the, the uh, technology behind them is really significant. Um, so with prop speed, there's lots of videos explaining how to put it on, and you have specific time frames for uh, for the different the barrier coats and different tie coats that you have to meet within certain minutes, or it has to be a certain tackiness and dryness, or, or the um, excuse me, or the paint will fail. Um, and they have a specialized, um, uh, certified, sorry, uh, yards that will paint the props for you. And it's sometimes if it's, if you've not done it before, I mean, the, ca the kit here at the time of filming is about 300 to $400 for a, a little set. So it's, it's a significant um, investment. However, once you do apply it, um, the paint itself, it usually lasts two to three years. And it, it does, it just blocks all the... Um, the barnacles and all the stuff from sticking to it so it it's going to save you as you saw from the picture from the first one you're not going to get a loss in performance it's not going to increase your performance and this is something I'll talk about in um, at the end of the presentation um, but it just it doesn't stop your propeller degrading so once you've hauled out and you've got a nice shiny propeller it's giving you the you know the, the nameplate performance that you should expect um, that with these types of paints it's not going to change and that's that's really the saving so if you think about it as three four hundred dollars then you've got to work out your fuel bill and how much you would save if you lost half or you your performance through barnacle growth depending on where you are sort of thing so that's kind of the calculations you do again I've not had experience with this we're going to be trying this this summer uh, the one I have had experience with um, has been again international paints uh, over here it's called Interlux um, they have um, a, a certain a brand of a silicon type paint um, it's, 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 it's more to it than silicon chemistry but for simplistic terms we'll, we'll just call it that um, so it's Intersleek uh, I did a lot of work with Intersleek 700 uh, doing sea trials and we'll get to that in a second um, but this is when you see the cruise ships in the Caribbean um, this is the stuff that they would use it's a professional application it's very expensive it's a little bit heavy paint so it does um, uh, add to the weight of the ship a little bit so your, your light weight is going to increase um, but the saving in fuel and the amount of labor it saves every single time it goes into dry dock you're not having to grip blast the ship strip it back to metal um, and get all the old paint off put the new paint on this one you as you saw in the picture at the beginning you pressure wash it touch up the boot top touch up the, near the bow uh, where any, any rope damage or chain damage has happened and then the ship goes out so it's a significant saving and also you're not putting um, the paint chips and the paint dust into the environment. So again, it's, it's got a it's got a nice place it sits in the environmental um, side of things. And then beyond that, we're just seeing this. And I actually have one here. We're going to try it again. This is this is summer. This is called um, Prop Per. Um, there'll be a link to it at the end of the um, presentation. And then you start to see what's called nanotechnology coatings. Uh, these are coatings where I mean, this one here you can see is is quite small, and it you, you would just apply it with a cloth. Obviously, you clean the propeller. There's a whole procedure to do that, and you would just buff it on, and it it forms like a nanoprotective layer that the barnacles and the weed and the fouling can't get into. So, again, I've tested some other tough uh, stuff in the UK, doing these um, carbon nanotubes, and there's all these fascinating surfaces that they're bringing out now and trying to emulate sharks and dolphins that don't foul in nature and trying to use that technology 
um, and make it into a paint that you can put on and um, stop the ships from fouling. So it's a it, it, chemistry in this in this field is is really 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 out there. Anyway, so I talked that I'd done some research um, back at my old university when I used to run a cavitation tunnel, and um, these uh, slides here. Um, there's a hat tip for Robert from Brunton's Propellers as well, who was involved in this project. Um, this was a school boat where we painted the propeller for the first time. I'll explain through, and it's a very similar process to what you would do if you'd bought the Micron 66 or the Triax 33, or if you'd bought the, you know, any of those paints that we talked about earlier. So it's a similar process of what you need to go through when the boat's on the hard. So although this is a, a real high-end commercial application, the techniques and the ideas are still the same. So let's just let's just run through this. So as you can see, when we hauled out, um, it's in the northeast coast of England. Um, you can the uh, propeller was wrapped in fishing line and everything. Um, again, adding to the drag and the torque of the shaft. We took all that off, and then once it dried out, the prop was covered in barnacles and hard growth. So we had it um, we had to chip all that off, and then at the end of it, we just had a pressure wash. So again, you're just going to get your old propeller or the strip it down get it as clean as possible and then degrease it and get all the gunk off it and get it as clean as possible because even fingerprints can stop the paint from sticking so this is kind of the level we're getting to here the general method of painting a propeller then would be to get the propeller hopefully you can get it off not always possible uh, to somewhere that you can work on it to grind the uh, propeller uh, sand it with typically about an 80 grit you're not trying to take metal off, you're just trying to expose the metal and try and get a nice uniform surface. And then you're going to have um, like an anti-corrosive, a tie coat or whichever preparation that you're going to do, you're either going to roll it on, uh, paint it on, or as here on the shop there, it's uh, done in a spray booth. It's very important at this stage to make sure that the finish you get on the paint is as best as you can make it. And it's really important that the leading edge of the propeller uh, is as smooth as possible. Any paint on the leading edge that's um, lumpy and bumpy can really cause the floor to trip in the, in the boundary layer and you get additional drag because of it. So we're really trying to minimize the drag on the propeller to give you as much performance as possible. So once you have the propeller um, with its um, tie coat on, like for example, the um, prop speed has a, like a yellow sub base, then you put the clear coat on top. And then you have to leave it for a certain period of time to dry before you can splash the boat. Um, I think for prop speed, it was like eight hours or something. And there's a case of getting the prop back on the boat. Now, this is a really tricky um, part because you don't want to damage the coating you've just spent a fortune on. Because um, if you if you make a cut or ding or a dent, the barnacles will find it and they will start to colonize there. And then they can actually cause a coating failure where they work out from that. Um, it, it's quite impressive. And you can see the final one there. Um, this was quite a little old boat. It's Benicia. It was the school research vessel with a nice shiny red propeller there. It always looks a bit strange. People, they expect it to be bronze and, and they see a red propeller and they're not quite sure what it is. So once we'd had it on, the idea was where then we looked at it every year. And they, the, the project ran about five years with the same coating on. Um, again, with um, regular... Um, over-the-counter consumer coatings, you get about two to three years, depending on how well you look after them. Um, with the commercial ones, they they have a dried up period of five years, so they try and get a five year lifespan out of them. So we hold every year uh, to do maintenance, do the through holes and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we checked it. So you can see typically what we would have to do, this is just a bit of water there and a whole bit of rope. And you would just, it would just be a slime layer on the propeller you just wash it off and it would be squeaky clean and we just put it back in the water. Um, over the years, they, they did get dings and dents and lobster pots went through it and cables and all sorts of stuff that went through the propeller that shouldn't have done. So the coating did start to damage and we did at one point, we recoated two of the blades. You can see this shot here, there's um, two of the blades. That was in Sleek 900 and it, it wasn't put on correctly. So it failed after one year and it, it didn't uh, didn't survive. And the other thing with the commercial vessel is when you're pulling a propeller off, um, the prop pullers <laughs> get quite big. So what the yard will do is they will heat the hub with a, uh, a torch. And you can see this one, it's damaged the coating. And the, the, the guys didn't even think twice about telling us about this. Mm. So it's one of those things you've got to be careful of. And there was no other way to get the propeller off. So after we'd done this the following year, then the barnacle settled there. Then that really was the end of the experiment because it really did deteriorate um, the coating. So... 
very robust, very easy to look after, good for the environment. So it's a nice, nice way to look at them. So uh, final thoughts then. Um, propeller paint is typically expensive. Um, I know the um, the prop speed is probably the, the highest level. Um, the uh, barnacle guard and the vivid, uh, the vivid comes in a small can, so it's not too bad. I think it's like hundred bucks. And the barnacle guard is like a $40 um, can. So for about 150 bucks, you can probably cord propeller. So it's, it, it's just depending on how much you want to invest and how much time you do. And obviously if you're racing all the time, you want to keep the um, prop as clean as possible. So you're paying a diver. So there's all these trade-offs that you need to do to work out which paint is good for your application. And again, talking about application, where you are will dictate whether you get hard shell fouling, soft shell fouling, micro, macro fouling, um, all that sort of stuff. So there's different harbors will have different um, parasites and bugs in the water that will settle and colonize on your boat. So you need to work out from other sailors what's the problem. And then they'll usually tell you that, well, they work with this paint because it works and does this, or they work with that paint that does that. So it's a really nice way to, to learn about um, what type of coating you should be looking for. And sometimes, because they are expensive and they come in large pots, if you two or three of you go in from the club, you can normally get one propeller painted from a full paint. If you have all three together, it's usually quite economical to do it that way. It keeps the cost down. Application is a really, really important part of the process. Spend time on this preparation, preparation, preparation. Lots of um, sanding, getting a good key, getting the very, very clean, keeping the dust out and good application. Follow the instructions to the letter. Make sure the layers are, are not left to dry if they've got to be put on like a tie coat or something. So really pay attention to the instructions. Mask well when applying. I know with Autoprop, um, we have little grease channel screws that always get painted over. So if you've got a tooth propeller for like a folding propeller, make sure you're not painting the teeth, otherwise you'll jam the propeller. So really just keep an eye on things. And obviously don't paint the anode. We see this all the time. You go to all this level um, and then it just puts the anode to sleep. So anyway, that's just a, a short introduction um, to um, marine paints, marine corrosion and marine fouling, which we've covered all three sort of thing in the last few episodes. Um, my name's Rod Sampson. I'm the US agent for Brunton's Propellers here in Virginia Beach. Um, if you have any inquiries about propellers, uh, please do get in touch. We'd be delighted to help. And uh, I keep reminding, and in three weeks' time, we're going to have the Annapolis Boat Show where we'll be on the stand with the propellers, autoprop, verifold. I have Sigma Drive on the stand. You can ask me anything you want about the paints or the fouling or any of the topics that's come up in the uh, TV show. We'd be delighted to help. Um, we've got one more episode left in the series, then we're going to take a short break. And then uh, the next series, we're going to be going out and about and going into uh, dry docks and uh, marinas and stuff and trying to do a little bit more different once the warmer weather comes. But uh, for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.